This is the Critical Conversations podcast, a KPOV special project developed to feature unique perspectives and the courage it takes to go there, challenge mundane thought, and question the norm. Javier Romo, um, if you're an avid KPOV listener, you might have heard him last week on the show in the morning um, with Bruce. And um, I wanted to have him on the show also um, to talk about his work, his work with veterans. And um, he, um, well, maybe, maybe you give us your introduction. I, you've done, you're doing some really cool things, Save the Brave. Um, but maybe let's hear from you. Who are you? What yeah, are you I, I appreciate it, Shanti. Thank, yeah. I mean, first of all, thank you for having me. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you're welcome. And I, and I appreciate this. I appreciate the station uh, giving me the opportunity to come out here and, and spread the word. But um, what, what I'd like to start with is kind of who I am and, and how I got here. Yeah, Okay. I love it. So I served in the Marine Corps from 1998 to 2007 in the Marine Reserve Infantry. 98 to 2007. So yes. that's what, like? Nine years. Oh, my gosh. My math is so slow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nine years, yeah. Okay, yeah uh, well, my, my body remembers them, <laughs> trust me. Yeah, well, My body remembers them, <laughs> trust me. I was in the infantry. I served as a forward observer. And I was... What's uh, a, what is that, a forward observer? A forward observer, forward observer. Is, is, um, is what some know... As a scout, okay. So my job was to move forward with what's called a fire support team. Uh, we located uh, enemy forces uh, okay. ahead of infantry, and we called in uh, mortar missions, artillery mm. missions, wow, uh, on those positions. So does that take a lot of like stealth, like a certain skill set? Yes, to, a, a, a certain skill do, set and, and knowing the, the ordinances, okay. uh, knowing how to navigate, mm. and knowing how to move undetected. Okay, thank you. So, that's good um, context. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, I I was activated. I was a reservist, and I was activated after 9-11. I mm. initially served on a homeland defense mission, which was really a workup, a one-year training mission to prepare for Iraq. So in in March of 2000, in February of 2003, I received new orders uh, that we were going overseas to serve in Iraq. And in March 20th of 2003, I was on the ground force uh, on the invasion moving forward mm -hmm. from Kuwait into, into Baghdad. Mm -hmm. And I, I served during the major combat operations into about July of 2003 when the major combat operations ended. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then within a matter of a couple of weeks, I was uh, I went from being in uh, the most violent environment that a mm -hmm. human can be in mm -hmm. to suddenly home. Wow! <laughs> there was absolutely no, no transition. Wow! And uh, there wasn't any talk of PTSD, mm -hmm. right. traumatic brain injury. Mm -hmm. What is your life going to be like? post-deployment and, and post-war. Mm. Culturally, uh, in our culture at large, and also within the military, both. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. On both levels. Uh -huh. Yes, absolutely. Uh, uh, in, in, our, in our culture, in our community, I, I was embraced. Mm. Okay? Mm. We were in a period of time where the country was uber patriotic, mm -hmm. and uh, I went back to into my field, which was retail loss prevention investigations. I was working for Target Corporation at the time. Mm -hmm. They took care of me. They mm. gave me pay mm. raises that were due to me. They gave me promotions. And, mm. and I had multiple job offers throughout the industry. Mm. Did you go back to a reservist as well when you came back? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, I continued to serve. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I just felt, I always felt a longing to serve. And at that point, e even more so because we had so many young Marines that were being deployed and didn't have the experience that that we had as combat veterans. Mm -hmm. That. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm that we could pass on to them mm -hmm. instead of learning the same lessons over and over right. and over, which right. is, again, what we traditionally Madness. do, even as, even as war fighters. Uh, yeah. Huh. Interesting. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, how I got here is that 
when I when I came back to the United States again, like I said, there was no transition, and there was there was no education or communication or any talk of PTSD, brain injury. What is your life going to look like? And I went from from being a a highly highly productive um, person, very high functioning person. Mm-hmm. You know, even as early as high school, you know, I graduated with 4.27 GPA. Mm. I was a literature major. Mm. And every school that the Marine Corps sent me in, I graduated number one, wow. honor man, consistently. Wow. Um, I was kind of that cookie cutter, mm-hmm. you know, athlete. Mm-hmm. Student athlete. Student athlete, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And, and, and again, very successful professionally. When I came back, I was struggling personally, mm. struggling professionally, mm-hmm. but I couldn't put my finger on it. Can I can I pause? I'm curious how old you were when you went your first deployment and you came back. 28 years old. Okay. It, I mean, it's significant because if we look at brain development, especially yes. for, for men, it's a little bit different than it is for women. And by 28, your brain is like almost fully matured, if not fully matured, somewhere yes. in that range. Okay. Exactly. There, okay. Should, there should not be a significant shift. Uh-huh. Yeah. Not like that. Right. Okay. Not like that. And there was a significant shift. Mm-hmm. I, I, was, I, was, I was doing well on the surface. Mm-hmm. When you came back. When I came back. Uh-huh but struggling otherwise, mm. and I could not put my finger on it. I was never a huge drinker. I mean, I, I drank in college, mm-hmm. you know. I yeah. mean, I was a kid. Right. <laughs> but, I, but I did well. Um, and when I returned, I was, I was drinking quite a bit, mm. you know, mm. handle bottles of whiskey, vodka, etc. Mm. And then... Almost immediately started to rack up uh, a resume of arrests. <laughs> yeah. A resume of arrests, yes. Yeah. For alcohol related incidents, mm. violent related incidents, or violent related incidents associated to alcohol. So, yeah. yeah. Because I, I knew one way to respond to threats, and that was with violence of action. Yeah. And and eliminating threats, and yeah. that in the in our community, unlike the military community, right, is mm-hmm. not tolerated. Yeah, and uh, I, I I found myself often in LA County Jail, which was it's one of the worst places mm. that you can be in, mm. you know. And uh, and I, I again I struggled with that for a number of years, and I, I eventually ended up at the Department of Veteran Affairs on arrest number four or five, mm. somewhere around 2009. Mm. And I was on, on house arrest at the time. Mm. I had a toddler mm. and, and another son, and, my, and a toddler, a little girl, and my son, who, was, who is about three years older than her. And uh, I checked into the VA with my anklet and my toddler mm, <laughs> into wow. the emergency mm-hmm. department at Loma Linda VA. And again, you know, I, as I kind of talked about a little bit uh, earlier, you know, I've gone through a number of different forks in the road. And what I realized at this point was that that I was going to end up in prison mm-hmm. and or dead Mm-hmm. And not able to be the parent I wanted to be for my kids, mm. or even just be present for them, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so like I said, I, I I went to the ER department at Loma Linda after kind of knocking on a few doors throughout the community in Southern California, and nobody could tell me where to go. Mm. Within when, your direct community, yeah. yeah. I went okay. to the American yeah. Legion, to yeah. Yeah. a veteran service officer, yeah. and I and I left all those places with with people in tears, mm. Mm. wishing they could help me, but they had no direction. Mm. They just didn't know. They just did not know. Yeah. yeah. So eventually, I ended up at a veteran service officer who directed me to the Loma Linda VA. I checked in, like I said, to the emergency room with, with my uh, my toddler with me, my little girl, Ziola. And uh, I was on house arrest, and they asked me why I was there. Mm. I pointed out my anklet, 
and I pointed at my toddler. Mm. I don't, I don't like the trajectory of my life. I'm not happy with what I'm doing with myself, and I, I can't put my finger on it. And I want to be present for my children, and I mm. want to be the best father that I can be. Mm. I left the ER department on valproic acid, gabapentin, hydrocodone, mm. and Xanax. Wow. Wow. Right? That's quite a cocktail. Yes. I mean, that just sounds like the worst Band-Aid almost. But okay, keep going. Yes. <laughs> their, their, their aim was was to control the emotional outburst. Uh -huh. Yeah. They just right? want to suppress everything. Just yeah, just suppress everything. Quiet it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Take me from a point where I was either, you know, extremely angry, mm -hmm. extremely sad, mm -hmm. extremely happy, but never level. Yeah. And try to level that. Yeah. Or even understand. Or even where, understand, yeah. Where is that coming but, from? You know, again, what, what the VA was doing at the time, and it's changed a little bit now, and, and I'm, I'm trying to change that also, is that they were trying to treat symptoms mm -hmm. with pharmaceuticals yeah. instead, of, instead of treating the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yes. Treat the symptom. Which um, we know from trauma, like the best, most effective trauma treatment is to really understand the story and the person. And to not like over overstep any of that, exactly. you know, you really need to understand. Uh huh. Exactly. Yeah. So so I left there on on uh, on that concoction on that cocktail, mm -hmm. and uh, and again, you know, different forks in the road, right? Yeah. So I, I went from a point again where I, I was I was drinking heavily. Um, I had a lot of emotional discontrol because of. Traumatic brain injury due to chronic blasts uh, in Iraq, mm. uh, coupled with PTSD. So, this is what you learned in later years. You didn't know exactly. this at the time. No, I did not know this at the time. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh -huh. And now I'm now I'm on a a huge cocktail, which they keep adding to. Yeah. Right. Which they kept adding to over the years, and and I continued with the same problems. Mm. Chronic abuse of alcohol. Mm -hmm. Now, with mental health medications added, mm. and opioids. Mm. Jeez. Right. Yeah. Uh huh. So I started abusing the opioids quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, Percocets, hydrocodones, uh, etc. Pretty much whatever I could get my hands on, and 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 washing those down with gallons of vodka and whiskey and gin and whatever else I could get my hands on. So my life started to again take a a, a, a different trajectory, and and I was n I was struggling quite a bit professionally. I couldn't hold on to a job. Mm. I had a lot of amazing jobs with, you know, some old companies, Radio Shack, uh, even TJ Maxx, Marshalls. I was a regional manager there, um, but I just couldn't hold on to these jobs. Yeah. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> right? <laughs> it makes sense. But what, what's going on, uh -huh. right? And uh, eventually, I was on so many medications that I started to have to take uh, testosterone cypionate. I just, hmm. for the combination of all the medications and, and the, the testosterone in the dumps, Mm -hmm. I could not get out of bed. Which makes it even worse. Yes. I mean, to add on mental health issues, you lose your testosterone. That just, yes. Whew, okay. Right? Uh -huh. right? Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I could not get out of bed. And again, just up and down, up mm -hmm. and down. And I, I couldn't put my finger on it. But again, I knew that I was leading to to more disaster mm -hmm. and uh and then suicidal ideation started to take over which i didn't have before the medications mm. so again i started to try to find a way out mm. and the only thing i could think of was somehow getting off the off of those medications yes and and trying to find um a natural way to heal. Mm. Can we pause right there? Absolutely. I, I'm really curious a natural way to heal. Because yeah. you are clearly a high functioning, healthy adult sitting across from me. So <laughs> you um, found figured out some answers. You were just sharing that um, you know, you you were on this journey to figure out how to how to get answers and to find healing. And um, you know, you you got a lot of drugs and meds and it kind of compounded the issue in many ways, but oh, yeah. it sounds like the big shift was when you found more natural 
methods to yes. healing. Yeah. So um, you're still in LA, and, sh- and what what happened? What came up that? So it, I, again, I knew that I had to change what I was doing, and what I d- was doing wasn't working. So I, I started reaching out to different nonprofits, trying to find a way to heal, and I, I knew that. I had to get off mental health medications, and I, I found some nonprofits, several nonprofits that were doing extreme cycling events with veterans, and I and I found a home there. Mm. You know, we were mm. cycling San Francisco to Los Angeles, Lubbock, Texas to San Diego. Just, I I found a lot of what I had in the past, mm. community, yeah, physical activity changing my lifestyle, changing the foods that I put into my body. And I was eventually able to get off of most of the mental health medications with the exception of the opioids. Uh, Uh, And I want to pause something that people don't realize that exercise creates bilateral stimulation, which helps your brain to process. And, and it also down regulates your nervous system, right? So, so even, even just doing the cycling in of itself, like it's doing so many other things beyond and community and, so oh yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah. I could not have gotten off of those mental health medications without that. Uh, it, it it really helped bring me back or start bringing me back to who I was. And you were breathing heavily. Just even yes. the deep breathing, what that does to yeah. the chemistry of the body. Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. That deep breathing, yeah. that deep yoga breathing that uh-huh. you have to do in cycling. Oh for sure. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. For oh, sure. Yeah. For sure. Uh-huh. So, so I was struggling to get off of uh, opioids at that time. Um, that that was kind of the last obstacle, and uh, my family and I made made a huge jump, and we moved to Bend. Mm, the whole family. Yeah. Well, yeah. my son, my uh, my older son, stayed in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. He was just starting high school. Oh, yeah. And, uh, That's hard. Otherwise, That's oh, it was difficult. But and what year was this that you moved here? This was. Uh, we've been here six years now. Okay. Yeah, six years. So now. Uh, 16, 2016. Yeah, two thousand fifteen, sixteen, 16 uh-huh. August. Um, and I. When I when I landed in Ben, one I found nature. Mm, yes, and nature was extremely healing for me. Mm. And uh, I found conservative medical approaches, yoga, acupuncture, chiropractic care, and again changing my lifestyle and the foods that I put into my body, and actually f- feeding my body so that it can heal and yeah. that, so that my brain can heal. Yeah. And uh, and that's what brought me here today. Mm. So I started I started on a journey shortly after getting off of opioids, of sharing my experiences, and and the tools that I found with other veterans. Mm. So four years ago, I, I went on a journey of building an event. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a wellness adventure week for veterans. A or week? Ent- a, a, oh, a I didn't realize long. it was a whole week. I thought it was a weekend. Okay, this yeah, is well, awesome. It's a, a week-long okay, event. I love this. Uh-huh. Where I introduce veterans to conservative medical approaches along with nature, mm. rafting, mm. community, mountain biking. I mean, just all the things that have helped me. Yeah. And um, And – Trying to give them those tools so that they can change their trajectory and improve their quality of life. And are you are you seeing that? Because you're in your oh, fourth absolutely. year, well, and absolutely. I would assume you're getting people returning, and you're getting to see the difference. Oh, absolutely, and and seeing people returning and seeing a growth not only in the yeah. in the participation, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. with veterans, mm-hmm. but the support with the community. When I when I built this event four years ago, I didn't have a budget. Mm. I, I I I went on a path to build an event without a penny. Yeah, <laughs> without yes. one penny. Yes, and. Uh, and this year, we were able to fundraise approximately twenty-seven thousand mm. dollars, so that we could lodge uh, about thirty-three veterans at Bunk and Brew. We oh, bought out the wow. Bunk and Brew for September nineteenth through the twenty-third. Wow! Right, uh, Sun Country Tours has stepped up to provide a, a rafting experience for mm. our veterans. We're paying for transportation. I'm paying for all the meals, mm-hmm. and. Uh, we have amazing medical providers coming in to buy, to provide chiropractic care for the week. Because this is key because a lot – so most people understand that these higher quality he- methods uh, that are available. But the, but the hard part is access because of financially – Yes. 
I mean, it is a lot of money to to do rafting. It's a lot of money to go chiropractor. And, uh, you know, we don't have resources most of the time. And I would assume that's really especially for veterans. Yeah, absolutely. So part, yeah. of, part of what we're doing during the event is not only trying to introduce them to mm-hmm. some of these resources, mm-hmm. but introduce them to the resources. Yeah. So, for yeah. example, Warfighter Outfitter will be there uh-huh. talking about what they do, mm. you know, and mm. supporting our chiropractor will be there providing and, and, and will provide resources to the veterans coming from Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. We're also going to be introducing the veterans to some of the resources that the Department of Veteran Affairs has to offer, even though it's not uh, information that's shared with them often, right? Yeah. So we're going to introduce them to where to find the resources that we, we're introducing them to yeah. and how to change their lifestyle without really damaging the pocket, right? Mm-hmm. How do you how do you put good foods in your body? Yeah. How do you afford to do that? Which is cheaper actually. Yes. If you are eating really healthy wholesome food. It, yeah, anyways, uh-huh. Yeah, and and I mean listen Shanti, the, uh, everything that I have done again, I, I I explained how all those medications took me to the point where I was taking 400 milligrams of testosterone cypionate injected every 2 weeks. Jeez. And now my testosterone again Mm-hmm. Is through the roof. <laughs> That's testament right there. Like, right? The dang. Department of VA, uh-huh. when I had that first blood test and they uh-huh. saw it up without uh-huh. the prescription testosterone uh-huh. cypionate, asked me this, what are you doing? Yeah. Oh, let me tell you what I'm doing, oh, yeah. right? You, you sure you want to know? Yeah, let me tell you what <laughs> yeah. I've been doing. I stopped doing everything you told me, yeah. <laughs> and I started doing this. Uh-huh. I introduced meditation, uh-huh. yoga, lifestyle mm. changes, activity. Mm. And what I'm trying to do now, again, is introduce that through this event to our warriors because we are struggling. We're in a huge crisis right now, and yeah. we have been yeah. post-9-11 yeah. with the suicide crisis yes. with our veterans. Yes. We say it's 22 a day, but it's significantly more than 22 a day. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of veterans lean on bad habits, a bad lifestyle mm-hmm. to lean into death. Mm-hmm. Is that suicide? Mm, kind of. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right? So, so we're really trying to affect that. And the goal of Save the Brave is... To affect the numbers, the suicide numbers, through therapeutic outdoor activities, specifically Save the Brave does offshore fishing. Mm-hmm. I'm introducing Outdoors for the Brave yeah. and specifically the event R&R for the Brave, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And, and, and to introduce community and healing through these activities. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm really touched by this story and I'm so thankful. I think you saw a deficit. And you filled it. And I think that's what we need to do. We need to learn from our experience. And then we need to take that learning and give it as a gift to the community. And that's exactly what you're doing. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely, Shanti. And, and also, I mean, in the spirit of servitude, right? Yeah. In yes. the spirit of servitude. Yes. And, and that is an amazing healing experience also. Yes, it's part of the journey. Yes, bringing this to our veterans helps me heal and it gives me purpose. Yes. Do you feel like now that you're on the other side of it, do you feel like you are the man you knew you always were? I'm working to get back to that man. You're still there? Yeah. 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 I'm I'm working to get on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. It's always a new journey, always mm. a new path. Mm. I'm working. I'm working to get there, but I am much closer to that man mm-hmm. than I was ten years ago. I like that. I mean, I think that's humble because I I think we're all working towards that person that we know we really are. Oh, so yeah. it's it keeps us yeah, in yeah. that drive. Yeah. Um. I I want to just highlight a couple things, and I want to give you it's it's really poignant how you notice such a change in behavior and and feeling and experience in life, and you know it's directly related to your trauma. And the power of your story is uh, hopefully can it impact anybody, whether so. they're a veteran or not, because oh, really, it, it, this is about it trauma. Transcends. It transcends is about yeah. trauma and how the community sometimes just doesn't know what to do. I and agree. how in that not knowing, we make it worse. 
I agree. So thank you for that story. And I want to give you this last minute to share what are the resources, the website, everything so we can find you. Yeah. So so one of our biggest challenges traditionally has been getting local veterans out to participate. Mm-hmm. There, there's there's always an apprehension with veterans, yeah. right? There yeah. is. That's just how we're built. Yeah. Um, so I'm really trying to get the word out for veterans to register for the event. The event is free. We've done all the fundraising. We're providing all the meals, transportation. We're trying to make this a seamless experience for our veterans. Uh, please register if you're a veteran in Central Oregon. The website is savethebrave.org, and the event is r r for the Brave. It's taking place September 19th through the 23rd. You can register Come to all, come to part of. There are two registrations, one for the week-long event and one for the rafting event on September 20th. Again, the rafting event is is completely paid for through sponsor, sponsorships and donations. We're going to provide all the transportation from Central Oregon, leaving from Bunk and Brew the morning of September 20th. And we're providing lunch at the halfway point, so please join us. Thank you, Javier. So good to see you and meet you. Thank you. Thank you. You've been listening to a KPOV Critical Conversation. To hear more engaging interviews on important topics, please visit kpov.org slash critical conversations.